Pancration, an ancient Greek combat sport that combined boxing and wrestling, had almost no rules. He bit me! No clothes. <laughs> no, 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 And was brought to the original Olympics in 648 BC. Uh, pan in Greek means all. Okay. And kratos is, is the word meaning power or force or violence. And so the pankration was a sport, a sort of all in brand of fighting. Oh crap. I've been saying it wrong this whole time. See, my interest in pankration, I think, actually stemmed from my honeymoon. Weird, I know. I went to Greece and got a chance to stop by Olympia, which is where the Olympics started. As much as I would have loved to film a video there, I was on my honeymoon and didn't really feel it appropriate. Also, my wife possibly would have beat me up worse than anybody in ancient Greece ever would have. So, I had to wait until I met David and Corey here. Two of the only people in the US that I found that really go hard into Pankration. Heck, David's even published a book about it. It wasn't the earliest combat sport among the Greeks. Wrestling is the oldest one, and then boxing. And then at some point, they come up with this new sport, the Pankration, which immediately became very, very popular. But no doubt it was already being practiced in, in various palaestras. I mean, every, every Greek city-state had its gymnasium and its palaestra. Okay. Uh, and so this would have developed sort of across the, the Greek world, basically. Oh yeah, so these were little buildings dedicated to the, to the cities. I don't remember what that was. A palaestra is essentially a state or privately funded gymnasium that allowed all male citizens to come in and hear philosophy, music, they could train boxing, wrestling, pankration. So it was almost like this community embedded in And competitors from palaestras all over Greece would come together and fight in these tournaments in which who you were fighting was decided by the gods. Okay, so once like uh, Livingston and Seth of the athletes, let's just say they line up over here. So there would be a registration table for lack of a better word, right? Should I be? No, don't keep them close. Technically, they weren't totally naked. So oh. they would wear a string around their waist, right? The penis was what they call infibulated, i.e. It, it was tied with a dog leash, right. as they call it. So you're not completely what? naked. <laughs> yeah, they would gather all the athletes into one place. They would have like, you know, like a big game four or a jug. The athlete would come up, quick prayer, reach into the jug and grab a bean and then would walk somewhere else. And Livingston would go, say a prayer, okay. grab a bean. And then after all the athletes had grabbed their beans, there would be letters, you know, Greek letters written on them, and then you would look, and if you had I matching have, one, you yeah. would, okay, Livingston and Seth, boom. And so now you have your first bracket. That process would be repeated for the winners of every round. Now, to win the round, it's pretty simple. Not too different from MMA. With Pankratian, the only rules were that you couldn't bite and you couldn't eye gouge. And so the way you won were through submissions or knockouts. So groin strikes, be our guest. Headbutts, go right ahead. Grabbing the opponent's shorts, like to see a try. Pinching, I actually don't know if they would have pinched. Submission, they didn't tap, they'd hold finger up, right? So we'll have images of a, a, you know, one athlete on the ground with his finger up. Uh, hello, I'm quitting. There were no rounds, there were no weight classes. Yeah. You just fought until you either destroyed your opponent or the opponent submitted. But holding up the, the finger. And now that Livingston and I have been matched together because we got those same Greek letters on those pieces, we were the first round. From there, we would go to these rooms, probably outside the palaestra. We'd have oil applied all over our body. We'd then make our way across the campus to the Olympic Stadium, where within a tournament of Pankration could have up to 132 competitors. The size of this thing is kind of hard to comprehend. But in this hot, sandy arena, our match would begin. And let me tell you, not many people you could get as a worse pick for a first round than Livingston. And... How go on, Ness? <laughs> so in the, in the paint, the vase paintings, man, these guys have these long switches that are clearly flexible and they are whipped, wham, and they are slamming them down on the athlete, uh, causing the foul. Somebody bite, somebody bite them there. And, oh, that's Seth. Oh, wagon, stop it! He bit me! He bit me! 
There's quite a few submissions. Strangles, small joint manipulation was legal, so there's even one particular athlete that comes down that's famous for breaking fingers. Yeah, finger um, finger breaker or finger man as he's called. And, yeah. and this, this is an example though of how specific athletes would develop particular techniques. Yeah. Clearly what was happening was that he was grabbing somebody's hand in a way that others had not learned to do so efficiently. Yeah. My fingers <laughs> Man, that's <laughs> interesting. You could, you'd arm bar him here if you couldn't break the grip. Oh, yeah, that's my toes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could do the toes. And, and was probably making it so painful that they would give up immediately, <laughs> unless they wanted their fingers broken. Oh, no. Not the heel. I wonder here if Seth could bite you. <laughs> I got the finger. Oh, oh, oh hey, you stopped. <laughs> winner, winner, man. I don't know. If, I, I don't know what the process for victory would be. I think you a drink. Doesn't feel like doesn't <laughs> doesn't feel like a victory, does it? <laughs> Feels like a death match. Can you imagine doing that for 45 minutes? Honestly, no. That was three and a half minutes wrestling. Now looked like one of those vases that they painted, except it was a Greek three-year-old that painted it, and then it fell and broke. Hello, it's me from ancient Greece now. Fun fact, did you know that the ancient Greeks sweat? They, they sweated? They lost a lot of water, but also a lot of salt to go with that. Another fun fact, did you know that the ancient Greeks drank element? Am I allowed to lie on this thing? Maybe they didn't drink element, but I do, and my body looks just like theirs. Trust me. But Seth, what is element? Ah, the Socratic method, teaching by asking questions. I like it. He was Greek. Element is a zero sugar electrolyte drink mix with optimum health in mind. See, I have it in my cup right here, and right here, and right here. And you never know, because they don't add a bunch of artificial colors in there to make you think, ooh, like pretty neon green drink. Anytime I'm working out super hard and I know I'm gonna be losing a lot of water, I drink a lot of water and element. And I always feel the most refreshed when I do drink it. I recover a little faster when I drink it. I don't get headaches when I drink it. I feel better when I drink it. I have more energy afterwards. And I can't tell you last time I had a muscle cramp. They've got a bunch of different really tasty flavors. Water Melon's my favorite. They've got raspberry, citrus, orange. They've got chocolate. So if you're doing any type of really hard training, strength training, long distance, anything that you work up a sweat, it's worth looking into. I'm a big fan of it. If they stop sponsoring the channel tomorrow, I would still continue to buy it and drink it. Get a free Element Sample Pack with any order that you make when you use my link. DrinkLMNT.com slash Sensei Seth. The sample pack has one of every flavor, so you can test them out, see which one you like. And if you don't like it, well, guess what? It's risk-free. If you tell them you didn't like it, they'll just give you your money back, and then you keep the box, and you can Give it to somebody who maybe would like it, and it's no questions asked. Again, that's drinklmnt.com slash sensei Seth, or click the link down below to get a free sample pack with any order that you make today. I'm gonna take a, I, I took this off the bed. I'll, I gotta go put this back. The durability these people have fighting nine times, you've been to Olympia, out in the sun in the summer and the heat, nine times, there's no water at Olympia, so they're probably all dehydrated, not to mention what life was like in, fifth century BC, right? Like it's gonna be hard. I think one of the most interesting things is time alone, if you brought some of these guys back today, they should be pretty good. Yeah. I, I, I mean, the depictions, and we'll get into those, the depictions and uh, illustrations show techniques that are exact same today. And they probably could compete or if not do well. They have such a much longer time to evolve techniques, right? And this is a pretty wild concept, but Pankration in the ancient Olympics started in 648 BC and lasted until 393 AD. It was probably honestly started before that. That means for 1,041 years minimum, there is a deep concentration in this sport, which wasn't just a fad, it was culture-wide. But man, how you set that up on someone's insane. Maybe there's a prevalence of not wanting to go to the ground, right? Maybe you didn't want to get your head pushed Right, so instead of like putting hand down or accepting a bottom position that some people may do, Instead, you are obstinate, like, no, I'm not gonna go I'm down. not gonna fall. Now, because you won't fall, I get to crank. I get to put you in these interesting positions. And to be honest, for those 1,041 years, this sport was much more deeply rooted in the culture than MMA is for this culture now. You can do the same thing, but you bring your arm over. The I mean, shoot, the fact that a couple of BJJ black belts are trying to pontificate what they could mean from these techniques, it's kind of mind-blowing. you think it's possible that guys kind of like we're doing right now, walked through positions with an artist, and the artist was like, give me some stuff to work with. Oh, absolutely. Cool. Right? Yeah. yeah, what's, a cool, what's yeah. a cool move, man? Yeah, cool yeah. move. Fine triangle. Some, show me something sick. It's kind of like literally what I'm doing right now, where I'm like, 
what do you guys think about this? You're just and mean, then you guys who are very talented and knowledgeable martial artists are like, oh, you could do this and then this. And then I'm like, the yes. Really, you're the modern day Voz painter, bro. Wow. Yeah. You're yeah. just wow. recreating a human experience through digital means. Dang. I don't even have to die. <laughs> yeah. And because of these artists, like myself, back in the day, we still have access to these great legends of Pankration. One of my new favorites being the story of a Rickian. I would, to avoid death, bite somebody uh -oh. to get disqualified. Yeah. But I'd they might a, not. I'd bite a dude to win. <laughs> they probably wouldn't because the, uh, the sort of moral implications right. would make them feel ashamed. So you, like, you would basically, I think, tough it out to yeah. the point that you absolutely couldn't any longer. And then or until you, you died. Or the, yeah, or according to the story about Ariki and his, his trainer shouted out to him at the critical point, what a wonderful honor it would be to die at Olympia, unsubmitted. Arikian was the winner of the Pankration at the 52nd and 53rd Olympiads. And in the championship match of the 54th Olympiad, he became a legend. Okay, so this is um, Polyakov's description. Having already grabbed Arikian around the waist, the opponent had in mind killing him and rammed an arm against his throat cutting off his breath while his legs fastened around Arikian's groin, he pressed his feet against the back of both of his knees. The sleep of death was from that point creeping over his senses, but in relaxing his grip, he did not get past Arikian's stratagem. For Arikian kicked away his heel, which put his opponent's right side into an unfavorable position. Then Arikian held his opponent who was not really an opponent anymore, to his groin. And leaning to his left, he trapped the tip of his opponent's right foot in the band of his right knee and pulled the angle, ankle out of joint with the violence of the twist in the other direction. You can never tell, man. Like, this no. is the part of the thing is the guy who wrote the, the inscription may not have been uh, familiar with what was going on to a total extent, they knew what was happening. Right. Or, so, so or like, there's sitting there writing and accounting all of this as it was happening. There's actually a description of a painting. In the last moments of Arikian's life, he won via submission and simultaneously collapsed. We're assuming from heat exhaustion. And in that moment, the crowd erupts, seemingly knowing that he died while winning the event. So while for most winners, they would scrape the olive oil and the sand off of their bodies and have an olive branch placed on their head in victory, Arikian had the olive branch placed on his lifeless body, thus cementing his place in history. There was a belief that that liquid, that, that sand and sweat um, had medicinal or healing properties. So, you know, the very famous athletes enter a realm of what you might call heroic cult. And after they died, people would sometimes visit their, their gravesite and, and even make offerings and, and hope for something beneficial, probably in the realm of strength or health from these um, famous athletes. So, so they, they hover on the edge of the world of, of heroes and, and Greek religion because these sports were presented really in honor of the gods. It was for Zeus at Olympia, for instance, where, where you were. And that's why being a victor was such a wonderful thing to have because it was, it was like you were touching the, the realm of the gods. Right, yeah. um, and Victory herself is always depicted as, as a winged figure flying through the sky. So you have to, you have to really work hard to, to grasp Victory. It's sort of richly symbolic in, in that way. Yeah. Um, so the whole thing was, as you say, infused with religious significance. I just want to say, this day was incredible. This is one of the most fun filming experiences I've had. I'd like to recommend Agony, David's book. It'll be linked down below. It's about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and the ancient Greeks. It's very sick. I also did a podcast with these two. It's Corey's podcast. It'll be linked down below. And if you feel like this video didn't fill you up enough, if you become a member of this channel, I have all this footage as an uncut version. It'll be on my membership. Just become a Yellow Belt member. You'll have that. And don't forget to subscribe. I went to ancient Greece for that. Okay, you get the idea.